Hello everybody, welcome back to the High Performance Housing Podcast. I hope you're all well. I've just got back to Paris, having spent nearly a week in Scotland. I was actually attending my uncle's funeral, um, who I've talked about uh, recently on the podcast. And it was a beautiful service. It was so lovely to see everybody, see my family, and really awesome to connect with um, family members that I haven't seen for a long time. Of course, everybody comes out of the woodwork and um, also to really see the amount of love and the amount of friendships and connections that my uncle Ollie had made. Uh, It really made me like really proud to have been a part of his life and to overlook, you know, the challenges that he faced. Because I think sometimes we, we really indulge in like the sadness of the experience, especially as clinicians as well. Like we really think about how this should never have happened and it should never have been. But then I really let myself just think on the day, like, what if this was how he was meant to be, how it was meant to go? And what can this teach us? What can I use from this to help myself grow and to help my audience grow? What can we use from this experience? And it was a really beautiful, like, moment for me to just sit there and be in awe of his life. (laughs) This is totally great, but I do think to myself, why are funerals so impersonal in a sense like I expect my funeral is going to be totally different I'm telling you right now I'm planning it right now I said to my partner I said if you run one of these funerals for me and have a complete stranger talk about my life and my life story I'll be dead and I can't do anything but I will be very annoyed because it's just like I just want people to be up there sharing the love I want it to it should be like a wedding in my opinion it should we should be celebrating we should really be celebrating um I'm a firm believer that our souls live on and they, you know, we don't die, uh, our body dies and that our soul lives on. I'm not religious um, and I just think that that's the only way that it can be. I I think we come here to collect all of this knowledge, this wisdom, these experiences to just leave. Are you kidding me? So that's what I choose to believe and that's the power of the conscious mind. And um, I just thought it was a a beautiful experience and I really sat in, in awe of my uncle Ollie and what he had achieved and learned so much about him as well. The other thing that I wanted to acknowledge here was that um, the aged care facility did such a beautiful thing. They invited, well, they came along, some of the staff came along that looked after him, which I just think was gorgeous. I thought it was so beautiful. And also they brought some of his um, peers, some of the nursing home peers. So some of the um, clients that were in the nursing home uh, that had spent a lot of time with him, that sat at his breakfast table every day. Beautiful. And he had helped all of them. I found out he had like turned their music player on and you know, all of the things. And I just, it was just beautiful. So that's where I've been. Um, I was back home and I'm back in Paris now. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about nursing success passports. I want to introduce this concept to you just to trigger some thoughts and get you thinking about it your own nursing career success passport. So the reason this came to fruition, the reason why I'm talking about this today is because over the weekend on a very popular blog online, there was lots of discussion around the fact that doctors have to work 10, 15 years before they can become a senior and they're recognized for their knowledge, wisdom and experience. And that in nursing, it's the opposite. And that we, you know, we've got nums and anums that are only five years qualified and you know, is that good? Is it not good? Should this be happening? And the whole tone of the chat, there was like hundreds of comments. The whole tone of the chat was like, yeah, young nurses are this and young nurses are that. And we shouldn't be doing this and they should have more experience and they should respect their elders and blah, blah, blah. And of course, in Trulium style, as a professional button pusher that I am, I felt compelled deeply in my soul to respond because I have seen light and shade on each end of the spectrum. I have witnessed ageism, I have witnessed lack of respect at each end of the spectrum. So I'm not going to sit here and say that young people should be respected more and older seasoned nurses shouldn't be. Uh, I think everybody deserves respect. It is a fundamental human right. But what I don't agree with is when we come in at one angle and we shoot at the other. And I think that that's what I wanted to talk about today in the sense that I'm a firm believer that regardless of how much experience you have, you are on a path and your path is determined for you and that you are here to live that path. So if your path means that you are a grad nurse and you finish and you qualify and you become a CM within two years, that was meant to happen. 
you are meant to experience that. And I think that what this conversation highlighted to me is that we are making shifts in the nursing profession around what used to be and what no longer will be moving forward. Because my take on this is that when we are having these back and forth thought wars, because that's what they are, they're just a collection of people's thoughts that are unprocessed, subconscious, deeply ingrained, conditioned beliefs that we've picked up somewhere on this journey, that we throw back and forth at each other, expecting somebody to back down, instead of really thinking intentionally like, oh, well, what is the problem with having somebody that's an A-num with five years experience? Clearly, no one else wanted the job. Clearly, they were the best fit for the job. Now, remove the biases, remove the panel biases. These things happen. Humans are humans. We do not live in a perfect world. And whether or not we agree that that person is the right person to get the job, they got the job. So what are you going to do about it? We can't do anything about it. We just have to live with that. And we get to decide whether we stay or we leave. So I was sensing through this feed, just this like real sense of victim mentality. And I resonated with it deeply because I have been there. I've talked about it on this podcast. I haven't got jobs. Other people have and I've left. But the difference there is that other people got the job and I didn't just sit there for a year, two years, 10 years going, oh my God, I should have got that job. And then I didn't make that person's life hell either. I just moved on. I just knew there was something better and bigger for me. So what I wanted to talk about here, what this triggered within me was why do we choose to not acknowledge people's experience? Whether it's one day, whether it's 30 years. At each end of the spectrum, we are devaluing that person's lived experience. And I wanted to create the nursing success passport and think, let you guys think about this in your own mind. Because without it, we don't really get to see our whole self. We don't really get to see what it is, all of the components that actually make us who we are as a clinician. Because just because I've only been qualified for five years doesn't mean that that's all the experience that I have. Like, how narrow-minded would it be for me to just be like, well, you've only got five years experience, but you've been on this earth for 30. Like, what about that? Like, the other 25 doesn't count? Why do we only look to experience when it comes to nursing as nursing experience, right? So when you think about your nursing success passport, I want you to think about the fact that Everything that you have is your nursing success passport. It's your life experience. It's your professional experience. It's your qualifications. It's your experiences, clinical or non-clinical. It's your certificates. And it's your spiritual experience. It's your soul's experience on this earth. It's your lived experience. When you go for a job, we don't separate out those things. You don't just go to a job and just go, okay, I'm just going to take the professional part of my passport with me and this is what I'm going to offer you today. You take the whole passport with all the pages in it, with all the stamps, all of the collectibles, right? In order to get from A to B, you've got to have your passport. To go from Paris to London, you've got to have your passport with you. So we've got to make sure that when we're thinking of our careers and we're thinking of people moving towards career goals and moving towards their next job, they are collecting experiences in their passport, collecting the stamps in order to move forward to the next thing. Why are we choosing to devalue that? Why are we choosing to say your 15 years of 20 or 20 years of life experience is not enough? Now, here's what I'm going to say. People forget that our lived experience is so variably different. You can be a 20 year old and have had a really tough life. You can be a 50-year-old and have had quite an easy life. Vice versa, the same rules apply. We cannot, we should not, the future will not allow it. I'm telling you, the future of nursing will not allow it. Because people are seeing through this shit now. They know they don't have to wait 20 years to get a promotion. And they don't want to. And I don't think they should either. Because here's what I know to be true. The system that we have currently, that's how it's designed. And how is it working? It's not working very well. <laughs> there are parts of it that are working, but we have a global deficit in healthcare. And yes, there are compounding factors there, but I believe a big factor of it is people do not have job satisfaction. They do not have what they need from their career. They are not moving towards the things. They're not getting permission. They're not getting the investment in their skill set. They're not collecting new stamps in their career success passport because we've got to wait five years. Once you get five years and one day experience, you're qualified. Who says 
Why is that even a thing? Now, some of you are not going to like this idea, and that's fine. I, I, you are allowed to make up your own mind, my friends, as am I. But I can't see another way of thinking about this. I can't see another way of us acknowledging that when somebody applies and they've only got five years of experience, that they actually have more than that. And regardless, it doesn't matter if they want to go for it and they are the, deemed the best person. Whether they are or not is totally out with our control. They don't get to decide. The universe decides. They then move forward and they collect the stamp on the passport and they go for it. Why are we choosing to make these people's lives much harder than it needs to be? If you've never been an Anam and a Nam and you shit on an Anam and a Nam, you do not have that right. You do cognitively have the right but I'm telling you like it's a hard hard job so if you haven't done it you what like why do we think that it's acceptable to then go well they're five years they shouldn't be doing that they should have 10 years because once you hit 10 years you're perfect for the job what about the person that sat in a role that's non-clinical for nine of those 10 years that's not clinically relevant that hasn't done anything, hasn't moved the profession forward, hasn't innovated, hasn't contributed to education, quality, improvement, leadership, culture, just shows up, takes breath, does the job and leaves. I'm not shitting on that. But those people with 10 years experience, are they better suited than somebody that joined the profession, did their masters, has challenged themselves, has grown, has opened themselves up to risk? that's being willing to publicly fail, that makes mistakes and owns them, that drives forward the, the industry, that introduces new ideas, influences change, changes culture for good or for bad. Why would that person have to wait 10 years when they've achieved more in five minutes than the person that did in 10 years? The only variable here is the human. And it's the human that is actually doing the work. So we need to really open our minds into what is possible in shorter time frames. Like, look at the whole world. AI is going to be running bloody the world soon. It's going to be running healthcare. There are going to be things in, in healthcare that used to take us weeks that will take us seconds. And are we going to say no to that? Why should we not open ourselves up to allowing people who want to pursue their goals to pursue them? I just cannot see a world in which that is a bad thing. Gone are the days across all industries where we have to wait. We have to buy our time. Like we can get so much more done in such a short period of time. I think that's why we have these cognitive blocks. Because we think that it still takes 10, 15, 20 years. Now, I'm not saying that people with 10, 15, 20 years experience should be disrespected or not invited to the party or anything like that. To the contrary, I think use them, utilize them, like connect with them, build rapport with them, network with them, like draw upon their wealth of knowledge. But again, the same thing is not true here. We can't say that people that have 20 years experience are going to be better in a met call. We can't say that, you know, we like in all facets or all scopes of nursing that they should be draw called upon and that they should be relevant. Because I'm telling you right now, I've been out of practice for a couple of years. I'm in, I've got more experience than my grads, but would I be the best fit in a situation where maybe they're more clinically sound? No. But the problem here is that we have ego. We have ego telling us, but I've got 12 years and they've only got 12 minutes. So we need to think of it differently. It doesn't matter how much time we have. The time and the experience is lovely and it's a great contribution, but it is not essential. So to wrap it all up, I want you to think about in your life, your nursing career, your professional, your non-clinical life, think about all of the things you've collected as like a little nursing career success passport. And regardless of what's in it, whether it's one minute or it's a million minutes, it doesn't matter whether it's one stamp or you've collected 24 stamps, everything, every piece of it is valuable. Do not let anybody tell you that you're not able or capable of achieving what you want to achieve because you don't have, quote unquote, enough experience or that you have to wait. Have you ever noticed that job adverts are very vague about this? They will have like three, minimum three years experience required. Again, I think it's bullshit. I think why do we need to have three years there? But they notice that they never say 
you need to have a mandatory, you need to have masters or mandatory, you need to have done X, Y, and Z, mandatory, you need to be able to demonstrate that you can manage your mind, mandatory, you need to make sure that you can manage a team of 50 people and create a psychologically safe environment. No, they don't put any of that on there. Why? Because the people that are hiring for these jobs don't freaking know that that's what's actually important for creating culture and the future of healthcare. That is what is needed. Not three years. Tick. Oh, three years, one day, tick. You're eligible. That's literally what happens. It's kind of crazy, right? I would love to know your thoughts about it. But your nursing success passport is what's going to take you from A to B. There are going to be people on the way that are always going to shit on you. They're always going to say, you're not you know, you don't have enough experience, you're not old enough, you know, or you're too old, or you've got too much experience, or you're overqualified, it happens on the other end of the spectrum. Um, and, you know, that's the other person's opinion. Do not ever let that stop you from applying for what you want to apply for. And don't ever let these posts on social media dictate your career path, because that is also a choice. It is not a requirement that we let all of this in, and that we tell ourselves, hey, you know, some stranger on the internet said that A-nums with five years experience are not as good as A-nums that have 50 years experience. Maybe it's factually true. But I'll tell you something. I have worked with incredible clinicians at both ends of the spectrum. I've worked with clinicians that do not want to be an A-num and they've got 30 years experience. If that is you and you are listening, please do not buy into the narrative that the person that takes a job that's only got five years is less than because they've only got five years. Think about how you can go and support that individual. Think about how difficult that must be for them. They chose that path. I'm not giving them sympathy, but think about how you can support them rather than take away from them. And the same is true for the opposite. If you're a new nurse and you're five years qualified and the ANAM that applies is 20 years qualified and they get the job, don't see that as a negative. Think about it. Dive in. How can I support you? How can I work with you? The biggest problem on reflection in my experience, my personal experience, that I made the wrong decision here was that I saw the other person as a threat and it was all ego-based. It's all ego-based. And having these conversations online where we just kind of proactively, subconsciously break down people's dreams through these messages like, oh, Anum's the fight, that's why we have a retention problem was the statement. That's why we have a retention problem. It's absolute tripe. It's not true. That's not why we have a retention problem. In fact, that's why we actually still have people in the industry. Because clearly, no one wants to fill the jobs. So these younger nurses are coming and taking the opportunity. And so they should. No one else is going to take it. For sure, you better know that I'm going to take it. Right? So, and whether it's right or wrong, it's part of the process. So I want you to think about your nursing career success passport. I want you to think about removing any biases that you have about the number of years of experience, really curiously think about, does that even matter? Why does that even matter? Right? Like you could be 50, come in as a a second career nurse, and you could be a nun by 51 if you wanted to. If you've worked in the banking industry and you've been, I don't know, running banks or being a bank manager, what, why would you not be able to come in and manage a team within a year as nursing? Why do we need to have nurses in senior nursing roles, especially a management role? I I beg to differ. I hope that in my lifetime, we see a time where we have non-clinicians coming in to manage clinicians. I mean, we've proven that we're not that great at it and there's no support. So what are we going to do? We either support the clinicians and help them become amazing, exceptional leaders, or we bring people in that are trained in leadership, culture development, managing business. And they run it like that. I mean, what would be so bad? It can't get much worse than it already is. So I want you to just be open to using your nursing success passport, collecting your stamps, collecting your experiences, flicking through it, being proud of it, and seeing the opportunities that present themselves and going for them, regardless of this perception of needing more experience. I hope this has triggered something within you. I hope that you take this and run with it. If you're somebody that's sitting on the fence thinking, I don't have enough, apply. This is your sign. Apply for the job. Regardless, okay? Apply for it. Do it. If you need to chat to me, you want to chat to me, book a call, let's explore, and I will see you in the next episode. 
Thank you so much for watching the High Performance Nursing Podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for all future video notifications. If you want to dive deeper into this work, please come and join us in the High Performance Nursing Membership. All the links are in the comments below. We would love to see you there and help you thrive within your nursing life, career and mindset. Let's do this.